come. Guys, Elon Musk. Here's Hi. Now, now uh, you, you know, we made it a point not to, not to rehearse anything. And so as, I just want to just as a, as a, as a just reminder, you're, you're my last thing. Okay. Okay, could you not ruin the whole thing? All right. All right, so remember, now, <laughs> speaking of that, speaking of that, I think everybody would like to, before we get into all of the good stuff, Okay. Um, and, and they want to go directly to the juicy stuff. Okay. Okay. And the juicy stuff is this. Uh, look, you know, um, uh, you were quoted as a saying that, that artificial intelligence is more dangerous than, than nuclear weapons. And, I said and, potentially. <laughs> and, and, well, it goes on. It goes on. And it you does say, go on. You, you, say, you say that it's like summoning the demon. Could be. <laughs> How do you consolidate, rationalize the, the, the conflict between artificial intelligence, of course, deep learning that, that obviously is going to be very important to self-driving cars? How do you think through that? Well, I, I don't think we have to worry about uh, autonomous cars because that's sort of like a narrow form of AI. Um, and instantly, I, not something that I think is very difficult, actually. I think the, to, to do autonomous driving to a degree that's much safer than a person is much easier than people think. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I think it's going to just become normal. Like it'll be like an elevator. Like no, they used to have elevator operators, mm -hmm. um, and then we, you know, we, we developed some simple circuitry to have elevators just automatically come to the floor that you you're at, and you can mm -hmm. just press the button. And you, no, nobody needs to operate the elevator. Um, it's, the car is just going to be like that. And the elevators these days are even smart. I mean, it knows, it knows where to position an elevator so, so that uh, if you were to need an elevator, it's pretty close to you. Cars in the future will be pretty smart about that, too. Yeah, you'll be able to tell your car, like, take me home, uh, go here, go there, anything. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll just do it. Now and, you guys and, yeah, at an order of magnitude safer than a person. Mm -hmm. and in fact, in the, in the distant future, I think it's probably going to be, uh, if people may outlaw driving cars. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's too dangerous. Like you, c you can't have a person driving a two-ton death machine. <laughs> now, if we if we have the right type of intelligence in a car, we we also don't have to make the cars that heavy. I would think. You know, cars are getting yeah. heavier and heavier, and it's got more and more stuff in it because it needs to survive all these incredible collisions and things like that. If, uh, I wonder if if we were to 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 design cars that that just simply don't collide as much. Um, I wonder if we could we could uh, relax on some of those laws and and yeah. make cars more fuel efficient and lighter and better to drive. You could definitely do that. If you could count on not a not having an accident, then you can uh, get get rid of a huge amount of the crash structure and the airbags, um, and uh, it'll be we're, we're a long way from that because there's always going to be some for, for a very long time there'll be some amount of legacy cars on the road, um, and and I think it, it is important to just appreciate uh, the size of the automotive industrial base, like. It's not as though, like, w when somebody m makes an autonomous car, that suddenly all the cars will be autonomous. It's like mm -hmm. there's two billion of them. <laughs> okay, so the, the the total total number of cars and trucks on the road is is two billion and climbing. Mm -hmm. The uh, capacity of car and truck production is about 100 million a year. Mm -hmm. So if tomorrow all cars were autonomous, it would take 20 years to replace the fleet, assuming the fleet stayed the same size. Arguably, it could get smaller if things are autonomous. But still, it's it, and it, it's still you know maybe 15 years or something, and it's not all going to transition immediately. It'll take quite a while. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and it's the same for electrification of cars. Um, it, it changing that industrial base to be electric. I mean, if 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 all cars were suddenly, if all cars produced were electric tomorrow, it would still take 20 years to replace the, the fleet. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, it's less than one percent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So. Now you you um you you mentioned just now about about self-driving cars being easier than people think. Now you, you have a, your vision of, of how to go from where we are today. Now my model my P eighty five D has uh, lane detection and, and so it gets a little bzzz, you know when I get close to a to a lane. Yep. Uh, it detects the the uh, uh, the speed signs and it uses a uses um, a computer vision technology to do that. And but and that's today's ADAS. What is your what is your roadmap? You know, how is that different than other people's roadmap? How do you think about how to get to self-driving cars? Yeah, well, uh, um, you, you kind of need the, the the hardware foundation, the sort of sensor and computing foundation, and then you can keep 
uploading new software, at least you can with a Tesla because it's, it's always connected. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the car that you have, you'll notice that it, it's the, the features are st steadily improving. Mm -hmm. um, we now you know, have uh, active cruise control, so it'll, it'll use uh, radar and camera fusion to track the car in front of you. Um, it's also looking at, at with, with the, some of the things that are coming out, it's got, it, it looks at the brake lights, so it anticipates that the car's got the brake lights are active. Um, it's going to get basically smarter and smarter, even with the current hardware suite. So the current hardware suite is 360-degree ultrasonic sensors that go up to about uh, just over five meters. It's a Ford camera and a Ford radar. So we'll, we'll make, the, even with just, just that sensor suite, we can actually make uh, huge progress in autonomy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we can certainly make the car steer itself on, on a, a freeway w w and you know, do lane changes. Um, it, it's really, autonomy is about what level of reliability and safety uh, do you want. Um, even with the current sensor suite, we could make the car go fully autonomous, but only to, but, but not to a level of reliability that would be safe in, say, um, a uh, complex uh, urban environment at 30 miles an hour where the lane markings aren't there and mm -hmm. children could be playing mm -hmm. um, and things could be coming at you from the side. So in order to solve that you need a, a, a bigger sensor suite um, and you need more computing power. Um, and I think what you're doing actually with uh, the Tegras in the future is, is super interesting and will really be a big enabler uh, for autonomous driving. So I think you know, we're, we're, NVIDIA is doing really great stuff on that front. I appreciate that. Yeah. And so some of the challenges that you see, what are, the t what are some of the technological hurdles that, and you know, there's all kinds of researchers in the room, there are all kinds of engineers in the room, what are, some, what are some of the technological hurdles that you think are really important for us to go tackle? Um, surely surely uh, we're going to get to uh, some better cruise controls on highways. But b oh, beyond control, that, what are yeah. some of the things that you would like us to go focus on to tackle for the car industry? Um, well, it's, it, you know, where it gets tricky is, is just the, um, is, is that sort of urban environment around 30 or 40 miles an hour. So, so like right, right now, it's, it's fairly easy to deal with, say, things that are uh, sub five to 10 miles an hour because we can do that, do that with the ultrasonics. Mm -hmm. We just make sure it doesn't hit anything. Mm -hmm. well, right. Just, you know, because you can always- Which is the right thing to do, largely. Yeah, like, <laughs> why would you want to hit anything with your car? Yeah, exactly. Not, <laughs> so at, at five to 10 miles an hour, you can stop uh, within the range of the ultrasonics. Mm -hmm. um, and that, then uh, from, let's say, 10 miles an hour to, um, you know, call it sort of, 50 miles an hour, that, 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 that area in, in complex um, suburban environments, that's, that's where uh, you, you can get a lot of um, unexpected things happening. Mm -hmm. Like let's say there's a, like a road closure or a manhole cover open, children playing is a big issue, uh, bicycles. Mm -hmm. um, once you get above 50 miles an hour and you're in kind of a freeway environment, then it also gets easier again. Mm -hmm. Like the, right. the, 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 the set of possibilities is much reduced. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, so hi highway cruise is easy, low speed is easy, intermediate is hard. Um, and so th being able to recognize wh what you're seeing and make uh, the right decision in, in the suburban environment in that 10, 10 miles an hour to 50 mile an hour zone is, is the challenging portion. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I really think like, it's, I mean, I, I almost, this may sound a little complacent, but I almost view it as like a solved problem. Mm -hmm. Like w we know exactly what to do and we'll be there in a few years. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, just, just like Mars. Uh, <laughs> but that's, that's kind of, quite that's, kind of <laughs> um, that's kind of the, 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 the spirit of, of innovators. I mean, in a, in a lot of ways, in your mind, you kind of, you kind of see things solvable um, or arguably, arguably solved, and, and um, a lot of it is, is really about getting there. Yeah, we'll take autonomous cars for granted mm -hmm. in, in quite a short period of time. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how comfortable you get and how quickly you get comfortable with mm -hmm. it. Um, so um, Now, what about government, yeah. government policies? Like, one of the things that I would like to do is I, I would just like to keep working on my email as I'm driving to work. Sure. You know, there's, there's a 30, so will, 40... Some people do that already. <laughs> 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 like I said, I, I would like to do it without... without uh, Without breaking the law, oh, yes, uh, okay. uh, so so where <laughs> where where do you where, where do you think government intervention falls in, in some of this stuff? Because 
you know, obviously, if your car drives by itself and it does it even better than people, mm -hmm. you would like it to drive by itself. But largely, the laws don't allow you to do that today. Right. Absolutely. So how do we cross that bridge? And, and, and how do you think about government intervention regulations? Right. So I think um, it, it'll be, from the point at which a car is definitely safer than a person, um, there's probably an, at least another two or three years after that before regulators will allow that to be the case, because they will want to see um, a large amount of statistical proof that it's not merely as safe as a person, but much safer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Elon, thank you. All right.